Welcome back. In the last episode, we retargeted the Sinti characters so that they will work in our project. So while we're walking around, we can now do so with the Sinti characters instead of the gray Unreal guy. Here she is, my businesswoman, or any other character that we want. And in this episode, we want to make it happen so that we bring up a menu at the bottom of the screen that lets us change that skeletal mesh out with something that we're going to pass in there. It's going to be a little bit complex and we're going to need some icons to make that look super pretty. But fear not, I have some prepared for you. If you head to my Kofi page and head over to the shop page, you'll find a free product that is called something along the lines of character selection in Unreal Engine demo. And if you click on that, you'll see that it's available free for download. And if you get it now, it'll contain the playable project that we're building as well as a little zip file with these icons that we're going to use. So go ahead and grab that. There's a link to this exact thing in the description of this video and when you have it you know come back and we'll get started with our menu i'm going to go and close my mannequin folder down i'll be in the third person bp folder in which i'm going to make myself another folder and i'm going to call that ui as in user interface inside here i'm going to make another folder just so that i have one for my icons there we go I'm going to go in there inside icons and you can either just go drag the icons in that you've got there or you can right click and pick import to game third person yada 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 and then just find them on your system so mine are i think on the desktop i think under Sinti characters i think under icons i think polygon city there we go that's them perfect those are all the icons that you'll get for free with my coffee product there I'll go and open them and they all come in. They're all transparent icons that I've rendered in Blender. So just to tell you how, what I've actually done here, I've gone to each of these meshes and exported them as an FBX, imported that in Blender, framed up my camera, put some lighting on, made sure I'm rendering it with transparency. That's why I've got this, this black background here and then just rendered them out in 96 by 96. So they're tiny icons, but they're going to be perfect for what we need. I'll go up one step back into the UI folder and I'm going to create myself a widget blueprint. So right click and head under user interface widget blueprint. That's going to make ourselves a class here that I might call selection menu. No spaces allowed, by the way. So selection menu. That's another blueprint. Let's double click that to open it up. And I don't know about you, but User interfaces like that, they're always a little bit scary. They kind of, they scare me. They always used to scare me. They probably always will scare me. But I must say Epic have made it extremely straightforward to, you know, for us to use it. So I'm going to start with something extremely simple. Under the top here, under common, I'm going to go and grab a button. If you don't see that, you can just go and search for that. It's all context sensitive. If you just go and search for button, one of those should pop out here. And that button, I'm just going to go drag it out anywhere into our viewport or into our canvas, I suppose. It's a canvas panel. A button is an actual object. A button can have, doesn't have to, but can have a child object. In our case, that's going to be an image. You could also use a text. If you don't want to use the icons, you can just put a number on there. You can have number one, two, three, four, five. Uh, but they can't have both. Uh, buttons can either be like regular buttons, they can have one child object that can either be an image or a text object. So I'm going to go and grab myself an image from this thing as well. I can see it here already. And I'll drag that also anywhere into this canvas or just onto the button, even better. And you can see that in the outliner on the left-hand side here, we can now see that we've got the canvas panel, which is the whole thing. Then inside of that, we have a button. And below that, we have that image. And it is that image that's going to become an icon eventually. I want to set properties up on the button to make it actually square. So with the button selected, I'm going to go over here and hit size to content. And that'll now make the button the same size as the image. The image itself, we haven't actually set yet. So let's go and make that happen next. Select the image and go again on the right hand side here. Select the brush for the image on here. That's under image. So let's go and pick one of my icons. 
uh, hope you can see it here. I'm going to pick the first one. I've, I've named the icons the same as the people. And you can see that the icon has now changed the size of my button to something slightly larger. Now we can see, you know, guy in a business suit guy here. It also says 96 by 96. That is the size of my image. That's that's perfect. That's a good start. Let's go ahead and name my button something meaningful now. So they now have automatic names like button 552 and image 755. I'm not concerned about the name of the image, but the name of the button is important because we're going to tie an action to it later and we're going to see this description in code. So I'm going to call this something at the top here, something memorable like button character one, perhaps. Anything will do that you will remember. This is just my first character so that I can reference this, that I can I can see in code what happens, what, what is this thing. I could just call it character one, but I might not necessarily know in code later what is this object that I'm referring to. So I'm going to go and call it btn character one. Hit enter, and that's a good start. Now, this guy should really not just float around here. I'm going to go and make several copies of him and then replace the images and replace the names of that in a moment. But before I do that, I might just go make that with, with one. So with Control w with the button character selected, Control w creates a copy of that. And now I've got another one. This would now be character 2. And I need to make sure that I'll select the image for character two and then go and replace that with the next one, which is in my case, uh, the businessman with the suit. There we go. Different thing. But these things, it'll be really difficult. Whoops, I see if I grab them, let's go and undo this. It'll be really difficult for me to go and place them next to one another so that they're all lined up. That's gonna, I, I'm, I'm not gonna have the patience for that. So I'll do something uh, much, much easier. I'm gonna go and select the first button and then right click on it and choose wrap with a horizontal box. And that's a really neat thing. That's a container object that'll contain more graphical items and then present them either horizontally. There's also a vertical box. There's all kinds of other things. There's scroll boxes and all that. So that's very, very neat the way that works. And we can either drag that in from the palette at the top left, or we can just go select our object and then go wrap with horizontal box. If I do that, I don't see much of a change except for I now have these two little arrow things and if I go and grab my horizontal box, I can now go and align that. Furthermore, I can go and grab my second button character and also drag it onto that horizontal box, literally so that it, it comes up. So drag it onto it so that it becomes that little yellow box. So not a line, but a box and drag and drop it. And now that puts both of my buttons underneath the horizontal box. And that now means that if I grab the horizontal box, I can go and move that to wherever I like. And it also means that my buttons are now aligned with one another. Nah, one puzzle solved. I'm probably going to want the whole menu array kind of centered at the bottom. So we're going to take care of that in a moment. For now, let's go and duplicate that character several times. I have, of course, forgotten how many characters we have in this pack. So let's go and have a look under Polygon City. I think it's nine characters. Just want to make absolutely sure under Meshes characters, I can see uh, just counting the pink ones here. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Those are just physics assets. So I need nine copies of the button. Very important. So I'm going to go and select my second one. Control W will make, whoops, select it actually, so that's yellow. Control W will make a copy. Same thing. Uh, so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Awesome. Now let's go rename these and give them proper images here. So this is going to be character three with another image inside. That'll now be for the next character, which is businesswoman. You can also zoom in there so that we can see it a little better. Then we go next button. That's going to be character four. Feel free to fast forward this. If you you probably get the picture. It's a little bit of a tedious uh, job, but you got to do it. Then there's a businesswoman. No, that was already businesswoman. We need to go skip ahead to female with a coat. That's nice. 
Next one, that's going to be character five, if I have counted correctly. I might just rename the buttons first. So that's, uh, that's character six. Make sure to select the buttons rather than the images for now. This is seven. Then we have eight. And then we have nine. All right, now the images. Sometimes when you select something in the viewport, you might not actually catch the image. You might catch the button underneath it. So I always, I would say, make sure you're actually on the image. This is now female jacket. We can try. Oh, yeah, we're, we're catching the images here quite nicely. Female jacket, female police. Male hoodie. I think I've forgotten one. I have a feeling I've forgotten one. Male hoodie. No, we haven't. Male jacket. And this guy is male police officer. Ha ha. That's nice. Look at that. We've got the whole menus lined up, sorted out. All we need is maybe a little bit of padding around the buttons and line the menu. I mean, it will work this way, but it's not exactly in the middle. So we're going to get to that in a moment. Right now, I'm going to go and select every single button, just the button, not everything, just all the buttons with multiple properties selected. I'm going to head over to the layout section where I can see padding and padding. That's This is now applied just to the buttons and that'll give us left, top, right and bottom padding individually or just one number. It's a bit like CSS this. If you give it one value, it'll just have a little bit of a gap there around the button. So perhaps I'm going to try 10. There we go. It's a little bit of padding there or 20. That makes the padding a bit bigger. Depends on what we want. Perhaps 10 is going to be sufficient because we're going to add a couple of other buttons later on to this where we're going to select the levels and how to quit the game and all that. For now, I think I'm just going to go with the characters and leave it as that. Good. One last thing I'd like to do, that's to line up the whole thing, but not the buttons. I'm going to line up the horizontal box. In fact, I can close the horizontal box for now and just make sure that horizontal box thing is selected. There's this little star thing at the top left. That's the anchor of this object. So with this green selected, I can actually see it's not exactly in the middle. So let's make that happen. Scroll to the top to anchors at the top right here. And we can see that with the anchor drop down menu, I can now set the anchor to whatever I like. I like for the menu to be at the bottom center of the viewport. So I'm going to go and select this this little icon here. And what that does is really set that little star thing to the bottom middle of the whole thing. It hasn't changed the menu yet. It's just positioned that anchor there. And notice all these little yellow arrows here. This means that something has changed in relation to something else. And we can also now click any of these yellow icons and reset the numbers to that value. Let me go and do that and watch what happens to the position of the menu. Position is kind of changed into something that I hadn't quite expected. I want this to be in the middle. Why isn't this in the middle? Well, it's because the alignment here is set to zero, zero. So technically the top left corner of the horizontal box is now set to the star icon here, which is, I guess, the anchor. And that anchor is in the bottom middle of our canvas. So if we wanted to make the position the horizontal box in the middle of that star. Watch what happens when I play with the alignment for X and Y. So it's currently set to zero, zero. If I set it to one and zero, the whole thing moves over that way. So it's a zero to one space that we've got here. Ergo, 0 0.5 on the X will mean that the menu is centered exactly on the middle of that anchor. And if the anchor is centered in the middle of the canvas panel, whoop de doo we're good. Same thing happens with Y. So if I put Y to 1, then I see that the menu will jump above that anchor icon and 0 will move it below. But 0 to 1 isn't the only thing I can set. I can also set it to 2 and then the menu will be twice the size of that, twice the height of that, which might be, for my case, a little bit too much. So I might just go and put that to 1.2 perhaps so that it's not exactly at the bottom, but slightly elevated, but certainly in the middle. 
There we go. That's a menu sorted out. We can now go and bind all these button presses and do something when we press a button. And we're going to see how that works in the next video. We're going to put this menu up on the screen so that it comes up when we start a game. And then we're going to see how we can hook up the buttons so that something is actually happening in our code and make sure the skeletal mesh is switching out on our characters. Join me for that.